Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and today I have a little something for Poetry Thursday, which I don't usually make videos for, but I do want to try and get into that habit and make poetry uh, a more consistent part of my reading. Um, now, I had read just recently, uh, I completed this, Poems from Black Africa, edited by Langston Hughes. Um, this was published in 1963. And this edition is from 1963, which you can see there's even a little gift signature in there from Janet, Christmas 1963. And I had picked this up at, it's not the, not the greatest condition, uh, I had picked this up at a used book sale um, in anticipation for the Reading Africa 2022 Reading Challenge uh, that Mark over at Book Time with Elvis is hosting, uh, where we are essentially using the Africa Cup of Nations soccer tournament, which begins in January, um, as an excuse or an opportunity uh, to read either books from or about Africa. Um, I'll leave a link to uh, his explanation video for that for anybody who's interested. Um, but in anticipation of that, I picked up some books on African poetry. So this one I picked up the used book sale. I also picked up um, this one here, uh, the Penguin Book of Modern African Poetry, which I'm about halfway through now. Um, now, you notice I'm in a new filming location. <laughs> That's because uh, my bedroom is empty except for a bed and this little uh, bookshelf here. Um, we got rid of all of our old furniture and our new furniture is being delivered, uh, bedroom furniture is being delivered tomorrow. So a fairly empty room. You may actually hear more of an echo in this room right now. Uh, but I'm taking the opportunity to try and make a few videos today. And what I thought I'd do is um, maybe just read a couple selections out of this one. Uh, so again, this is 1963. I think this is really one of the first books of its kind to showcase for, especially an American audience, uh, poetry from Africa. And there's a selection of various countries in here. Uh, we've got Nigeria, Liberia, Ghana, Mozambique, Madagascar, Congo. Uh, most of these were originally written in English, but there are some exceptions. Some were originally written in French, some in Portuguese, um, and there are also some uh, oral traditions that we see in here um, that have been translated as well. And some of those are actually pretty good. And I thought I would read a few selections, uh, ones that stood out to me, and uh, hopefully you like them. So, I guess let's proceed. So the first selection I have is actually um, from an oral tradition uh, from Yoruba, from Nigeria. Um, and this is one about hunger. Um, and I thought this was interesting. It says, hunger makes a person climb up to the ceiling and hold on to the rafters. It makes a person lie down, but not feel at rest. It makes a person, person lie down, unable to stand. It makes a person lie down and count the rafters. When the Muslim is not hungry, he says, we are forbidden to eat monkey. When the Ibrahim is hungry, he eats a baboon. When hunger beats the woman in the harem, she will run out into the street in daytime. One who is hungry does not care for taboos. One who is hungry does not care for death. One who is hungry will take out of the sacrifice money. When death shuts the door, hunger will open it. I have filled my belly yesterday, does not concern hunger. There is no God like one's throat. We have to sacrifice daily to it. The next poem is from Kwesi Buru from Ghana, and it is called The Search. The past is but cinders. Of the present, the future, the smoke that escaped into the cloud-bound sky. Be gentle, be kind, my beloved, for words become memories and memories tools in the hands of jesters. When wise men become silent, it is because they have read the palms of Christ in the face of the Buddha. So look not for wisdom as gu and guidance in their speech, my beloved. Let the same fire which chasten their tongues into silence teach us, teach us. The rain came down when you and I slept away the night's burden of our passions. Their newfound wisdom in quick lightning flashes revealed the truth that they had been the slaves of fools. This next one is from Liberia, from Edwin Barclay. It is called Human Greatness. The starry hosts whose far-flung cohorts gleam 
with silvery radiance on the capes of night, have quenched their bivouac fires in the wild flight, are hastening like a panic-haunted stream of crushed battalions. Mighty did they seem, the flaming bulwarks of eternity. But now, for all their glorious pageantry, the filmy remnant of a faded dream. O oh, history, upon thy glowing page, time writes her judgments, but she writes in vain. Her symbols man misreads at ev in every age and garners thence from legacies of pain. Then why lift up, O oh man, your heart in pride? You are but dust, and even Caesar died. This next one is from Peter Abrahams, uh, originally from South Africa, though I know in the 1950s he settled permanently down in Jamaica. And just a few years ago, unfortunately, I think in 2017, uh, he was murdered at the age of 97. Um, so, sadly. Uh, but this poem by him uh, struck me. And it's called Me Colored. Aunt Liza, yes? What am I? What are you talking about? I met a boy at the river. He said he was Zulu. She laughed. You are colored. There are three kinds of people. White people, colored people, and black people. The white people come first, then the colored people, then the black people. Why? Because it is so. Next day, when I met Joseph, I smacked my chest and said, me, colored. He clapped his hands and laughed. Joseph and I spent most of the day, sorry, most of the long summer afternoons together. He learned some Afrikaans from me. I learned some Zulu from him. Our days were full. There was the river to explore. There were my swimming lessons. I learned to fight with sticks, to weave a green hat of yellow willow wands and leaves, to catch frogs and tadpoles with my hands, to set a trap for the spring house, to make the sounds of the river birds. There was the hot sun to comfort us. There was the green grass to dry our bodies. There was the soft clay with which to build. There was the fine sand with which to fight. There were our gra giant grasshoppers to race. There were the locusts swarms when the skies turned black and we caught them by the hundreds. There was the rare taste of crisp, brown baked, salted locusts. There was the voice of the wind in the willows. There was the voice of the heavens in the thunderstorms. There were the voices of two children in laughter, ours. There were Joseph's tales of black kings who lived in days before the white man. At home, I said, Aunt Liza, yes? Did we have colored kings before the white man? No. Then where did we come from? Joseph and his mother come from the black kings who were before the white man. Laughing and ruffling my head, she said, you talk too much, go and wash up. So those are just a few examples of some of the poems uh, that can be found in, in this collection, again, from 1963. I think a lot of the pieces in here are kind of what you would expect. Uh, there's certainly a lot of, you know, glorification of Africa, of blackness. Uh, you know, you see a continent largely kind of taking ownership of itself and, you know, rediscovering itself in certain ways on its own terms. Uh, so there's a lot of that in here. And the ones that I that I read were the ones that just kind of stuck out to me the most, um, that I enjoyed the most. Um, but anyway... Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this is Poems from Black Africa, once again edited by Langston Hughes, originally published in 1963. Thank you, Booktube.